Hello everybody, this is David. This video is on a digital clock on the VGA screen. Um, I'm also going to talk about a new binary clock I made. In previous videos I had a binary clock. I got a new and improved one that brings all the modules together. So I'm going to go through the Verilog code, explain all this, and then demonstrate it on the screen. So here's the binary clock circuit. This is the basic circuit we had before, you know, tick the increment the hours, increment minutes button, you know, system reset for all the counters, 100 megahertz, creating a one hertz generator, and that one hertz ticking seconds, when seconds gets to a value, remember it was the neg edge that ticked the minutes, the neg edge that ticked the hours. These buttons um, would also be ORed. Um, to tick hours and minutes and then the 4-bit value of the hours the 6-bit value of the minutes and if you wanted the 6-bit value of the seconds would have to be converted to bcd in order to drive the seven so each digit of a seven segment display so for the seven segment display clock i had the hours tens hours ones minutes tens minutes ones digits didn't have the seconds digits i'm going to include the in seconds uh, this one on the vga so here's the vga circuit Got the increment hours, increment minutes. Here's the binary clock I just showed you. The 100 megahertz is driving the clock, the VGA controller, and the pixel generation circuit. We got a system reset. So just like we saw in the last slide, those BCD values is going into pixel generation. Also for the from the VGA controller, we have pixel X and Y and the video on signal going into here. And I'll instantiate the digit ROM. What it is, I just took the ASCII ROM and I cut out all the characters I don't need and I just left in there the number 0 through 9 in the colon which just happens to be next in the ASCII list at 3A um, right after 3.9 so it's pretty cool and so that's driving the RGB values to the VGA connector of course async and vsync down here all right so I'm going to explain uh, something called text scaling so on the left over here, this is what one of my ROM digits looks like. This is the smiley face, um, if you've seen some previous videos. But this is what I have in one of the locations in the ROM. It's 8 bits by 16 um, addresses. So normally you would, in the pixel generation circuit, set the row address to the Y30 and the bit address to um, pixel X20. Now to scale it, you just got to shift these values. So come over here to the right. So in the pixel generation circuit, if you want to scale it up to 16 by 32, that is each single bit will be treated like a block of four bits. Then you just shift the bits to the right and drop the LSB. So I went from 30 in the Y to 41. 2-0 in the X to 3-1 and then you can scale it even further so to go to 16 or 32 by 64 you just shift it over and drop the LSB again so now I got 5242 and each one single bit within this ROM is treated as a block of 16 bits like this so one thing you got to keep in mind when you're scaling is um, you're actually splitting the screen up into sections of tiles so when you go um, bigger, you're reducing the amount of tiles on your screen. So if we have 16 by 32 pixels, then if you divide the width of the horizontal screen, which is 640 by 16, you get 40 tiles across the horizontal. And in the same fashion, 480 by 32 pixels, you get 15. So you end up with a 40 by 15 tile screen. And if you try and, and write your digits um, halfway into one tile and halfway into another you're gonna get like the bottom portion of your digit on the top part and the top part on the bottom so you have to make sure you keep your positioning in mind because you're creating tiles and now I'm gonna use the 32 by 64 so I'm creating a screen section into 20 by seven and a half and I'm just gonna imagine that this, the half part is at the bottom I'm just gonna put this somewhere in the middle of the screen but I'm gonna make sure that I have uh, enough room to fit um, a couple of tiles of 32 pixels coming down horizontal and think about how I'm going to split it uh, or vertically and then split it you know so I fit my my letters right into a tile so let me take you over to the code okay here I am in Vivado got a basis 3 project target language Verilog 
you can see the module hierarchy over here of the VGA controller, the binary clock, the pixel generation, and then instantiated within that is the digit ROM and then the top module. Here's the VGA controller. It's the same one I've been using lately. I'll just scroll down through it so you can check it out. The code's also on GitHub. I'll post it there, uh, link in the description afterwards. So here's the new binary clock. So I've worked on this past couple of days. I'm really excited about it. It's really solid. It works good. The last clock with the button, the releasing of it to tick the signal, it was kind of glitchy. And this, this clock right here makes setting the hours and minutes a lot better. And it also takes care of all the debouncing and the one hertz generating itself. It's all inside this one module. So I bring in the 100 megahertz clock. Of course, got the reset, um, the tick hour, tick minute signal, and an output of the one hertz. If you want to use it to blink an LED or something or colons on the screen in between your hours and digits, seconds. I'm not doing that, but it's there. It's available. And all the BCD values. So here's the signals for button debouncing. Go ahead and just take and instantiate a couple of uh, debouncers in here for the tick hour and the tick minute and get another signal for each one that is debounced. And then here I create the one hertz signal, same one hertz I've done before. I just create the signal in here and assign the output um, down lower. But yeah, here's the clock part. So I got a seconds counter, minutes counter. Each of those is six bits to count from zero to 59. The hours counter to count from one to 12. I'm gonna kick it off at 12. So we can start our, uh, the clock's gonna start at 12, zero minutes and zero seconds. And then just control each register. Here's the seconds counter. Um, if reset, it goes to zero. Else at that tick, I'm using the one hertz tick that I create in, inside here for um, incrementing all these counters. So seconds is 59, we wanna go back to zero, otherwise we wanna increment it. And then here, if reset, the minutes goes to zero, else at the tick one hertz, I'm gonna check for the debounced uh, minute button. So you're incrementing the minutes and the hours is gonna be the same way by holding the button and when the one hertz signal comes on, it's gonna increment. So it, it actually increments the clocks a little slower but you don't you're not going to skip over a number with a with a you know a not so right debouncing but anyway we're looking for that button press and if seconds is equal to 59 then we're going to check if minutes is 59 if it is we want minutes to go back to zero otherwise we're going to increment same kind of logic for the hours uh, it'll be reset to 12 again and then we're going to check for the button press as the tick one hertz comes in and for minutes counter to be 59, seconds counter to be 59. And then we're gonna check the hours. If it's 12, we want it to go back to one and otherwise we want it to increment. And then this down here takes care of all of the, the BCD values. So I'm just using, a, I'm not using registers, so I'm using wires. So I'm just using assigned statements and using the division operator to break out the tens of each value and the modulus operator to break out the ones portion of each value. And these are all for the outputs here. And here's the output, the tick one hertz that is the uh, register of one hertz that gets toggled. Okay, here's a look at the digit ROM. It's the same thing as the ASCII ROM. Like I said, just cut out everything but numbers 0 through 9 and the colon, which happens to be 3A, the next in line. And I am going to infer this as block RAM. Um, yeah, it's 11-bit addresses. And so this middle bit right here is the BCD value, which will be red. And I'll show you how we, I'll take care of the address in the pixel gen. Here it is. So here's the imp. I'm not using it to blink the colon. If you wanted to, like I said, here it is. Here's the tick one hertz. You bring it in and then you put in your logic down for your colon on signal. I'm going to bring it in clock video on from VGA controller X and Y. Here's the BCD values. And then here's the RGB going out. And then these are all the sections, keeping in mind the uh, the tiles, like I said. So if I'm using 32 by 64, I'm coming down three tiles of 64 before writing to the, uh, or actually this is the 32 part for the X. So I'm coming over so many tiles of 32 and then writing at the X. And as far as the 64, it's the same number down here, coming down three tiles of 64. And then each of these X values goes 
uh, plus 31 for 32 pixels from here to here and this is 64 from here to here and all the um, the y values are the same 192 256 because I want all the digits on the same row but then I just section them off so the next one uh, starts off at the next pixel right here 31 pixels later or 30 it's actually 32 pixels wide this one picks up on the next pixel over and it just keeps going in that same fashion between um, hours tens digit hours ones the first colon minutes tens minutes ones the second colon seconds tens and seconds ones and then I got a signal for each of those sections right here um, and then here's where I'd start the ROM interface so I have an 11-bit ROM address and I have a 7-bit character address which I will take and create a bunch of uh, different ones for each section down here that's what these are right here and they'll get assigned and they're essentially going to be that three bits because all the in the ASCII table all of the digits in the colon start with the three bits of binary 011 and then I'll attach the BCD value to it and concatenation down here but I have the register for the row address and then a row address for each one that gets assigned a bit address and a bit uh, address each one gets assigned um, I do that so I can assign the uh, you know do the scaling and then it also is a uh, multiplex down here each one of these is multiplex um, then there's the digit word the actual data that's in the ROM it's 8 bits wide and then a data bit for when we have a 0 or a 1 within the ROM data so then here's like it says scaling up to 32 by 64 I'm using that 5 to 2 and 4 to 2 pattern for the 8 by 16 to scale it up to 32 by 64 and then for each one this is the hours tens digit I will concatenate that three bits of binary for the uh, character address and then the value the BCD value of hours tens and I do the same thing for hours ones the colon is just straight up set to 3a it doesn't change but it is scaled also they are all scaled with the same values this is the three bits of binary with minutes tens minutes one here's the colon again then seconds tens and seconds one and here I'm instantiating the digit ROM um, with the address and the data plug these names in here ROM address digit word that were created above and then here's how I go through and turn on each section so I have those boundary values that I set with the parameters up there so I'm just using those for each section for hours tens hours one and then here's a little bit of extra logic for hours tens if hours tens is not equal to zero which means it's one then I want to allow it to show so I don't want a zero to be in front of a value like one or three zero three I'm going to turn that zero off and then here's the uh, the hours ones digits now if you wanted to blink the colon then you would add like another logic piece right here and you would just add and your blink signal whatever the name of that blink signal that you named for the wire in here that's coming from the binary clock <clears throat> into your pixel gen you would put that logic and you would blink the colon along with the one hertz signal here's the minutes 10 section minutes ones another colon seconds 10 seconds ones now here's the multiplexing for all the character address row address bit addresses <clears throat> so it's um basically the background is going to be close to black i got two 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 instead of all all zeros um, but if we go through each on so hours 10 is on we're going to set the character address register to the assigned wire of the character address for hours 10 row address the same bit address hours 10 and then we're going to check the digit bit that's the digit going through each um, column of the ROM each bit of the ROM if it's highlighted then I want um, or if it's a one yeah it's highlighted I want the I want it to be red otherwise it's going to just remain this background still and then for each digit I have the the hour ones on do the same thing set it to the hour ones character row and bit address check the digit bit same color you can change the colors of the digits if you want I just got I'm making them all red like like you would see a normal seven segment uh, display clock there's the colon section 
the uh, minutes 10, minutes 1s, colon 2, seconds 10, seconds 1s, and then the ROM interface. So the actual ROM address is a concatenation of the character address and the row address that gets assigned in each one of these. And then that digit bit is um, the actual ROM data um, digit word, but then we're reading it backwards because the zero of the bit is on the right, but the pixel counts in the X uh, direction going from left to right, so it would be backwards. So this is to, to put this tilde in here and it'll it'll turn out right. And that's pretty much it. The top module just ties everything in. I have the uh, RGB buffer right here. Um, these are all, all the signals are created here, just like for the block diagram for tying in all of the uh, values to each appropriate module. Um, I already have it. I've had it running all night. Actually, I I set it to my clock uh, on my computer. Uh, let me show it to you. Okay, so here's the clock on my VGA screen. I got the camera thing figured out, so it's it's not backwards like it's been in the past. But you can see the the hour section, the minutes, and the seconds. Um, I've had this thing, like I said, I had this thing set to my the clock on my computer since last night, and it's right on. It's it's running perfectly, and it's easy to set the hours and minutes. I got the basis three right here, um, so I can just take in. If I hold down the op tick hours, you'll see that it only increments as the seconds increments. So it's tied into that one hertz signal. Same thing with the, uh, I don't know where it went there. I have an issue with the connection on here sometimes. But uh, there's same thing with the minutes too. You just hold the minutes button down and as seconds increments, the minutes will increment. And then you'll see as the minutes increments, then the, uh, the hours should increment as well. Well, I guess it doesn't do it when the button's pressed. It's strange. But it will if you just leave it go. It, it, it works actually, so. Huh, I didn't realize that. I never tried to do that. But, uh, but anyway, there you go. Uh, VGA clock on the basis three in Verilog. Thanks for watching.